2022 was the year when India saw record mergers and acquisitions, notwithstanding global slowdown. The total value of M&A deals stood at over $152 billion in 2022. In 2021, it was $107 billion. Adani's acquisition of ACC and Ambuja from Holson, mergers of HDFC Twins and Air India and Vistara were a few highlights. But the trend has reversed this year. The value of mergers and acquisitions in India fell sharply by 76% in the first half of 2023 to $3.2 billion when compared to the same period last year. But it seems family-promoted groups are still on the fast lane. Earlier this year, Aditya Birla Group's fashion and retail arm, Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail, acquired 51% stake in TCNS Clothing, the owner of leading ethnic brands like W and Aurelia. In yet another massive deal, Aditya Birla New Age Hospitality acquired 100% stake in KA Hospitality last month. KA Hospitality runs premium restaurant chains in the country. Another family-controlled group, Torrent, is also trying to punch above its weight by trying to take over Sipla. This month, Nirma entered into a definitive pact to acquire a 75% stake in the pharmaceutical giant Glenmark Life Sciences, followed by the Berman family, which holds a controlling stake in Dabur, set to acquire a 26% stake in diversified financial services group Religare Enterprises. Experts say that with India Inc. looking bullish due to increased cash flows, family-led businesses may be hoping to leverage that trend through mergers and acquisitions. Indian economy now is uh, poised to grow and uh, that's a normal commentary now from uh, 3 trillion to 5 trillion. Uh, Indian companies are doing very well, as you said, uh, they have largely deleveraged their balance sheets and their, uh, the credit quality of banks is also quite good. And uh, so, and stock markets are at an all-time high. If anything, uh, all these businesses or companies can leverage uh, uh, stock as a currency also to make acquisitions. So that is one reason why uh, I would think m and activity will is uh, robust. According to reports, about 85% of all incorporated businesses in India are family businesses. They play a key role in driving India's economic growth and generating employment. Meanwhile, Business Standard recently reported that Indian companies showed a surge in the amount of cash they generated in the financial year 2023, compared to the period before COVID-19. Companies generated 73% more cash from operations in the last financial year than in 2018-19, shows an analysis of over 300 S&P BSC 500 firms. Capital expenditure by Indian corporates has also seen a rise on the back of improving cash flows and healthier balance sheets. Three out of four companies from a sample of 373 of the S&P BSC 500 index reported year-on-year -year improvement in gross fixed assets for the financial year 2023. Data from the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy shows the value of private sector projects under implementation has grown, but it is less than government spending unlike a decade ago. This makes one think if these mergers and acquisitions by large family-led companies come at the cost of greenfield projects. I don't think so. I, I think that entrepreneurs are smart. Entrepreneurs will not jump in just because the government wants to increase the capex. Capex availability is an additional factor, facilitating factor. In some respects, they may take the MNDA route to enter but may again expand through CapEx. So uh, cap, CapEx actually means that you are getting into a greenfield area, which is a diversification, which also means that you go through the startup process of uncertainties. So in a MNDA, uh, you are trying to compress this uh, phase. But one of the key things I would like to underline is that it's easy to get a deal done. It's not easy to integrate an acquisition. 
As far as the large family promoted conglomerates are concerned, some of them like the Aditya Birla Group announced capital expenditure of nearly 48,000 crore rupees in India till financial year 2027. Reliance Industries' capex for the June quarter in the current financial year was around 39,000 crore rupees, up from nearly 31,000 crore rupees in the same period last year. A recent global study suggests that Indian family businesses are more resilient than their global peers. Family businesses put long-term stability ahead of short-term gains, thereby ensuring that the organization lasts for future generations. So most of them with deep pockets will continue to drive mergers and acquisitions in the days to come. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business Standard